My name is Pastor Dan Whitener. I'd like to welcome you here to this virtual worship experience this morning. Uh, if you would like to follow along the order of service, you can click on the appropriate link on our website. A couple announcements about our life together today I'd like to share. First of all, our monthly giving emphasis is Family Promise. Uh, see the newsletter for opportunities to give to support that ministry in our community. Also, I'd like to announce that next Sunday we will resume in-person indoor services at 8.45 and 11 o'clock with strict protocols that you will receive sometime this week. Also today at 2 o'clock in the parking lot, uh, we will gather to do the annual blessing of animals in keeping with the tradition of St. Francis of Assisi. So come and join us, uh, socially distance with people and animals, and we will gather together at 2 o'clock for that. The theme of our worship this morning is the meaning of money in light of Christian faith. Let us prepare ourselves for worship this morning. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth.
by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Your love is amazing, city and unchanging. Your love is to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperors. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus said, show me the money. You can find it in today's Gospel reading. Actually, he said, show me the coin. So let's talk sense about sense this morning. The first American coin was minted in 1776, fully authorized by the Continental Congress. Benjamin Franklin provided the basic design for this pewter dollar inscribed with the word fusio, Latin for I fly. This word was paired with an image of a sundial to depict how time flies. Franklin must have anticipated how money can fly away too. A continental dollar would be sold today for at least $1,500. Look at a typical American coin today and you'll see the words e pluribus unum Latin for from many, one. 
Sounds like a noble sentiment describing our country's current struggle for authentic unity. But the truth is that our founding fathers borrowed these inspiring words from the title page of a British book published every year by Gentleman's Magazine. It was an anthology of articles and the slogan originally meant from many magazines, one book. That's a bit like finding a new national slogan today in a tweet. Look at a typical coin today and you will also see the words, in God we trust. This motto was not officially approved by Congress until 1956. Earlier in the 20th century, Theodore Roosevelt actually opposed the motto to be placed on our currency. He thought it a sacrilege to inscribe the name of God upon something so common as money. Nonetheless, in 1956, the motto was adopted by the nation, beset at the time by the threat and fears of godless communism. So what's in your wallet? What does your money say to you? I fly from many, one, in God we trust. There's certainly a lot of meaning to be found in money. Jesus knows that money is a major factor in the shaping of our lives, for good or for ill. He focuses on it a great deal in his ministry, more than he emphasizes marriage and human sexuality. In fact, his focus on money is second only to the primary theme of the kingdom of God in the Gospels. For Jesus, money is not to be idolized nor demonized, but to be utilized to pay taxes to the governing authorities, but also to advance God's work in the world. Money is never an end in itself, a treasure to be socked away like a continental pewter dollar for over 200 years until it has grown in value up 1,500 times. What would be the point of that? You are going to die long before you see that kind of appreciation and you can't take it with you. There was a man who had worked all of his life and had saved most of his money. He loved money more than just about anything. Just before he died, he said to his wife, Now listen, when I die, I want you to take all my assets and put it in the casket with me. I want to take my money to the afterlife with me. He made her promise with all her heart that when he died she would put all of the money in the casket with him. Well, he died. He was stretched out in the casket. His wife was sitting there in black and her friend was sitting next to her. When they finished the ceremony just before the undertakers got ready to close the casket the wife said wait just a minute she had a box with her and she came over and placed it in the casket then the undertakers locked the casket down and they rolled it away so her friend said Girl, I know you weren't fool enough to put all that money in there with your husband. She said, listen, I can't go back on my word. I promised him that I was going to put that money in that casket with him. You mean to tell me you really put that money in the casket with him? I sure did, said the wife. I wrote him a check. 
The meaning of money is that it is an asset, a resource for us to put to work in the world. If you listen carefully, even in rocky economic times, like we are experiencing in the present, the money entrusted to you is not saying, I fly, or e pluribus unum. Instead, it is saying, put me to good use for godly purposes. If you haven't figured it out already, this is a stewardship sermon, so it needs to be said that good stewards are people who use the resources that they have been given to advance the interests of Jesus in the world. Everything that we possess has been given to us by our loving Lord in an extreme gesture of generosity. We don't really own anything ourselves, but instead we are called to care for the things that belong to God for as long as we are allowed to walk on this earth. We relish the gifts, we delight in them, we manage them, but then we let go of them. We break these gifts open for beneficial use. It's true that we have to give some coins to the emperor, more than coins. Death and taxes have been two of life's certainties at least since the time of Jesus. But beyond this, we have a great deal of freedom to exercise in the use of the assets entrusted to us. As Anne Lamott puts it, giving is the way we can feel abundant. I would say giving is the primary way we can appreciate the abundant life God gives us. To give truly is to live. So what's in your wallet? What's it saying to you? And how are you going to use it in a truly spiritual way? Take a look at a typical American coin or bill. You'll see the words, in God we trust and liberty. The phrase, in God we trust, challenges us to rely on our good and gracious God and to believe that God will care for us in the future just as God has cared for us in the past. The word liberty reminds us that we are free to be generous in our intentional giving as faithful stewards of the great abundance that the Lord has given us. In a loving and generous God, we trust. With liberty, we support God's work through this church for the sake of an anxious and struggling world. That's the meaning of money. Somehow and love. 
confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. <clears throat> Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share in good, your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of praise, the heavens of, and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to the setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, May your word of peace sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, displacement, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt especially those affected by Hurricane Delta and the wildfires in California. Ed, Michael, Barbara, Carol, Larry, George, and those we name aloud or silently at this time. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of community, we give thanks for the opportunities to worship either outdoors or online during these past months. Be with us as we find new ways and places to worship safely in the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raise Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms for all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Joining together using the words that our Lord taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace together, whether it's with people in your home or via text or email with those who are on your mind. Reach out to a friend, a neighbor, and share the peace. Remembering with gratitude the gifts that we have received Join me in praying this offertory prayer. Each of us is a fragile miracle, evidence of God's creative hands and amazing grace. We are each unique, unrepeatable gifts to the world. We are proof of God's love. And so we, who are the gifts of creation, now give gifts to our Creator, gifts brought in love. Amen. Thank you. 
May the Lord be with you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. Amen. One day be silent, lost in the wonder in all of your name. The wonder in all of your name. Eternal, none is your equal. We cry, no other God but you. No other God but you. Name above. Every tongue confess.